During the GoGrava grand opening just a few weeks ago, we had the distinct opportunity to sit down and speak, speak with State Senator Judith Schwenk and also Berks County Commissioner Christian Leinbach, where we learned about the initiatives that they put forward in their decades of service to the community and to the, uh, the people of Pennsylvania. And those investments were within the trail system and to get people outside and have paths of exploration and paths of commuting and, and uh, paths of uh, outside enjoyment that children and people like myself and just families could enjoy in Pennsylvania and in the Berks County area. So we learned a lot about this during this interview. This is part two of a four part interview series during our grand opening. I was co-hosted by uh, David Klein uh, from DaveKleinProductions.com and he was a great assistance during this. So watch as we learn more about the legislation process and how our local community leaders and our state senators think about investing into the communities to help the economies around them. All right, hi everybody, I'm Dave Klein. We're at the grand opening of Go Grava, a new cycling center in Wyoming, Pennsylvania. We are with the owner, the founder, the dreamer here, Mr. Aaron Johnson. And with us, we have two very esteemed uh, longtime advocates for Berks County and our area. And that is State Senator Judy Schwenk right here to my left. And then a little bit further over, Berks County Commissioner Christian Leinbach. Great both, to be here. Both of whom have had active roles and played active roles whenever we've had any major cycling event roll through mm -hmm. the community. And certainly whenever we have a, a new business open up. And this particular new business has a very interesting business philosophy that attracted me. And it's that idea of fusing together products and services from North America, Central America, South America, Northern Hemisphere based. It's really a cool thing. And we can talk about that later. But thank you for coming, Senator. Absolutely. I'm thrilled to be here. And as, as noted, both the commissioner and I love to uh, be around when something good co happens mm -hmm. and comes to our community. So, Aaron, I'm thrilled. Of all the places in the United States you could have gone, you came here. Yes. And because of the trails, and we can talk about that for a minute, but what I have for you is a certificate of recognition from the Senate of Pennsylvania it talks about your business and um, you know that this is your first location, mm -hmm. brick and mortar. Yeah. So, you know, we're, we're very pleased to have that ha happen. And it, you know, it, it focuses also on the, the world-class trail mm -hmm. system that we have here. And I think that's where Christian and I come in. Oh, absolutely. Because to us, when we were, you know, got the request, when I was a former commission, mm -hmm. county commissioner and now a state senator, and Christian as a commissioner, you know, we invested in these trails and continue to. And this is like we thought business would come, people would come. And you are yes. a real indicator that that's <laughs> come to, 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 we've come to realize that dream. Yes. So this is your dream as well. We want you to be well, do well here. Um, we want to support you and congratulate you. Um, this is a lot of hard work and it's a significant accomplishment. So let me present the certificate to you. Thank you. And thank you so much for, thank again, you. for making this investment uh, yes. in our community, our county, and, and, and our commonwealth. It means a, a lot to yes. us. Yes, thank you, Judith. Uh, thank you very much. You yeah, betcha. Thank you, guys. Yeah, great. Appreciate it. Yeah. I kind of paraphrased it. It's, yeah. So I will, get, I will <laughs> put some, them, uh, right? some reference out there for anybody who's watching this video. I have former military. I did 20 mm -hmm. years. My dad was in the military. Marines, right? Marine Corps, yeah. It's all that. And uh, so we, I lived all over the world and the United mm -hmm. States. And a lot of people don't know this, but in the this area, Berks County, Reading specifically, even Harrisburg, Pennsylvania has yeah. the most extensive trail system for bicycles in the entire United States. It is the most fantastic place to do bike touring, bike riding that I've ever seen, even out to Pittsburgh, where you can ride the Allegheny Trail and be mostly on trail all the way to Washington, D.C. Yep. It is absolutely fabulous. So for me, it was a kind of an easy decision. It was a it was a toss between Wyoming, which has mountains, and, and we will open a store there in Wyoming too, but since my wife is here and I'm actually living here, I was like, no, we have to do this here. We got to do it in the Reading area, and uh, yeah. 
Well, Aaron, what I think is really interesting, and uh, Senator Schwenk knows this, so does Dave Klein, we've been involved in a lot of efforts. I remember early in my term, uh, 2008-9, the core states uh, bike race was in uh, Reading. Uh, we had, I forget what it was called, uh, but a couple years of a, a race, and then we went into the rad sport. And we in the county, uh, including uh, Judy's time as a county commissioner, invested and continued to invest in trails. The Union Canal Trail, uh, the trails uh, on Antietam Lake Park, uh, Bamba is a big, big part of that. And now the Mount Penn Preserve that pulls together multiple municipalities, including the city of Reading. And one of the things we've talked about is this is an investment. Yes. And it will bring dollars into the community. Yes. We're sitting in a store that is evident yep. when you invest in cycling and trails for uh, bicycles, it does generate real revenue. Well, we have a new business now. Yeah, not only that, there's a new bike ride uh, that just started. It's going to be coming through June. Mm -hmm. It's called the 911 Trails Ride. Oh. Right They're going to ride from Arlington, Virginia to the Pentagon, and then they're going to make their way all the way up here into Reading. And then out towards like the Harrisburg area, okay. going towards the flight to and, Somerset, yeah, to Somerset, and then make their way back to New York City. So wow, people are really recognizing it. I heard one statistic at the Philadelphia Bike Expo that like the Allegheny Trail had over a hundred thirty thousand bicycle riders on it last year. Wow, wow! And not only that, I've only lived in this area for seven years. Mm -hmm. And in seven years, I have seen the changes that have been made to the Scoop River Trail in this area. So yep. as me as a cyclist, I'd like to thank you for the work that you've done uh, for creating the system that not only just for riders like me, but kids, mm -hmm. my kids can enjoy. Uh, and my well, Aaron, that's important, too, because Schuylkill River Trail, you can go from Reading all the way to Philly. Yes. There's a gap between Reading and uh, Hamburg. And that is being worked on right yeah. now. There's some challenges uh, with that, but you're right. That is an e enormously popular trail. I, I would add one other thing. I think trails in general, when you look at Berks County, we have some historic trails. Yes. You have the Appalachian Trail in the northern part of the county. Uh, oh, yes. You have the Horseshoe Trail in the southern part of the county and a, a wide variety of trails. Some of those trails are limited to hiking. Some are bikes and horse, yep. horseback riding. Blue Marsh, Blue Marsh, uh, U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, great biking trails. Oh, it's a wonderful. Uh, I there. use that one quite a bit. It's, There's a lot. And, and Berks County is just a microcosm of you know what can be done. This is probably the best example of cooperation between the county, the state, the city. Yes. Um, even federal government in terms of Blue Marsh, Absolutely. for example. But if you look across the state, we have what we call conservation landscape initiatives. Yeah. And there are about seven of them scattered throughout the state. In each one, there's investment in trails. There's investment in main streets. There's investments in other recreational opportunities. Mm -hmm. And so that we can actually capitalize on tourism and bringing people into the community to help appreciate these resources that are here. Yes. And of course, when you look at Pennsylvania's legacy in terms of the railroad, the Rails to Trails program, we have absolutely capitalized on that and yeah. have some of that even here in Berks it's, County. It's interesting, Dave, because it, we're almost like bringing back the uh, historical aspect of cycling because mm -hmm. I have a, a, a print copy handbook of a bicycle company from Reading, Pennsylvania. Oh, yeah. Reading was a major manufacturer. Yes, they were. In the 1880s and 1890s. So let me geek out on you a little bit regarding that. So I've taken it upon myself to reactivate, this is some years ago, a club that had been, uh, just went defunct because of time and circumstances. It's called the Penn Wheelman. And back mm -hmm. in the late 1800s, the Penn Wheel Wheelman was a group of mostly men at that time, that was the era. They got together and they put on bicycle races. Their bicycle races were so popular that it ended up that community leaders at the time saw the trend and they built a bicycle race track in what is now Reading City Park. Yeah. Hard to imagine. Mm -hmm. It was a half a mile race track could accommodate up to 500 riders at a time. They built a band shell with it and a gardens that went with it. And um, that history uh, from the late 1800s up to the early like 1920s. 
Reading was one of the cycling capitals mm -hmm. of the world. Yes, yes. Folks would come from all over. Bicycles were being manufactured in Reading. Bicycles with the names of like the Stormer. That was their hot <laughs> bicycle bike. I have that brochure. <laughs> yes. That's, it's awesome. All that's chronicle of the Penn Wheelman Facebook page. But, um, you know, they, uh, the statistic I read somewhere, I found it at the uh, Burke's History Centers in their library. Mm -hmm. And they were manufacturing enough bicycles that they were taking 18 boxcar loads of bicycles were being exported from downtown Reading every day. 18 boxcar loads of bicycles. That's yep. tens of thousands. Of, can you imagine? We had steel. Mm -hmm. We had steel factories. There was another. Sure. Steel. So, so this has been a long time bloom that continues yeah. to open. These two officials here have dedicated significant portions of their time and energy as a uh, representative leadership for, for us, for we the people, in these bike events. You mentioned a couple of them. So the Reading's history has included big, big, huge bike events, major international bike events. Those are great calling cards to get people involved with cycling. Like, hey, look at this. Oh, that's exciting. Everybody gets excited. And then that dies down. Now you coming along is taking their hard work and vision and, and making sure these trails happen. And now you're taking the next level and you're saying like, but this attracts me as a business here. Yes. And you're going to be making more people aware of that. So I think it goes mm -hmm. back to what you said. It's kind of got to be exciting for you guys. Oh, it is. Without a doubt. It's getting it, right? Right, right. I, I would add another thing. The races we referenced uh, were road races. Yeah. And it's very interesting, as I read in preparation for this grand opening, uh, you're focused on trails. Uh, focused. Go, If I understand, go... Grava is gravel, gravel Spanish. Yes, in Spanish, yes. It's a mixture. So I'm mixing go, you know, English word, Spanish word, and we're really trying to mix the Amer uh, like an American, true American made product, like South American, North American, sure. uh, in a way. And because everything in cycling is all made in Asia, 95%. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And it doesn't have to be. Um, not that there's anything wrong with understood, products, but. I mean, there's some, I still have some high quality stuff uh, from Rock Brothers, which is mm -hmm. a Chinese company and stuff. But um, but no, it's focused on gravel and trails. I think a lot of people as traffic's increased and stuff, they really need an avenue and it's a trail avenue. Mm -hmm. So we are really going to be trail focused. And not only that, I am uh, challenging the regular person. If you just come to the shop and you ride 100 miles this summer, I'm going to give you a free t-shirt. Wow. Awesome. I would give we can all sign up for that. Yes. Yeah. It sounds like a lot, but honestly, 100 miles in a whole summer. A whole summer, yeah. Well, and, and on a bike. It's and not like bike. 100 miles of hiking. You know what? 10 miles here, 10 miles there. What I love about this is it's not just for, you know, certainly for the avid bikers, but for people who are thinking mm -hmm. about getting into biking, people, yeah. whatever age mm -hmm. level you are, because we have very accessible trails. Yes. That makes, you know, this makes it possible. And yeah. you're bringing great equipment for people to get into. Right. Just to get out there and, and something's this. better than sometimes, nothing. Sometimes, sometimes in my industry, so I've, I have six years in the cycling industry, mm -hmm. and they do focus too much, I think, on the high level, very high ticket items. Right. And we kind of forget about the uh, the regular person. The casual right? or. The casual yeah. rider. And well, stuff. I mean, I look right here in the front window. You don't have the high end bikes. You have. <laughs> The little, the little bike to get the kids started off. We also have, yeah, the little kid. We can fit you up with one of those, Christian. <laughs> yeah. You even have pedals. But you know what? You know, bring but that's how you start. Bring, Absolutely. Bring, bring it back. Because yeah, yeah. I want to talk about that. Because when I saw those, oh, my yeah, eyes up. lit up. I can see it here. Yeah. I'll hold it. At least a few of us here have grandchildren. And this is, you know... When we learned to ride bikes, do you remember the training wheels? Mm -hmm. yeah, and, oh my God. and you remember your parents trying to re wheel you yeah. around? It was, you know, it was a, a rite of passage. Now little kids, very little toddlers, mm -hmm. are using bikes like this. Notice they don't have any pedals yep. and they don't have training wheels either. This mm -hmm. is the way they start to learn to ride. Yep. Now, my grandchildren, who are four and eight, are big kid bikes. And... And mm -hmm. When we were learning how to ride, we weren't ready for that yet. So the, the industry has changed. You're yeah. bringing something to this community. You used to have to buy it online. You can get it here yep. as yep. well. It's just, so, it's just so unique to me, and I think it's great. Thank you. And I love the pink. And, and it's affordable. <laughs> it is affordable. $110. We can, and it's a well-made well bike. You can feel it here. Yeah. 
feel it. It's not junk. Yeah. No. And so we will move around. And so that's part of my journey too as a business owner is actually finding out where where is the quality at? Where's the quality bikes at? And um, start making sure we can also stock affordable quality. Because mm -hmm. one of the things I see when I walk through some stores, some of the bigger chain stores, is I see the, the, the uh, wheels on backwards mm -hmm. because they just have an employee who's not a cyclist and doesn't doesn't really know. And they're just their job is just to kind of put it together. Yes. And if anybody buys a bicycle and they're unsure about it, I'll be more than happy to take a look at it too, mm -hmm. just to make sure people are safe. So, Thank you. Thank you. Know, a lot of those bikes too, are just, you know, truth in what is what truth is. It's a stubborn thing. A lot of those bikes uh, that you might get at a big chain store, you might think like, oh, that's great. I need a Christmas present or birthday mm -hmm. present. And look at that price point, $50 for a bike or something like that. The problem is they're manufactured with this stuff called white metal. Mm -hmm. You know, so white metal, it just, it breaks. Yeah. It's, just, it's not yeah. meant to, it's, there's no longevity yeah. to it. So, so talk about the cost to get in to biking, getting a bike here. Yeah, so we can, we can outfit people. So to bridge the gap, because I know a lot of regular people are going to mm -hmm. look at a $2,000 price tag and say, wow, that's really, really expensive. And so what we'll do is we will find that range uh, that's between $1,000 and $2,000 that will really... That is a bicycle that can last you 10 years, mm -hmm. really 10 years. And um, if you go below, let's say you buy a regular bicycle, $600, $500. The problem I've always had is maybe the frame's good, and that's why you're paying five or $600, but all the components that change the gears and the brakes, they end up falling apart. Mm -hmm. And when you bring it to me to fix, now you have to pay two, three, $400 to fix it. So you might as well just invest and a little bit higher mm -hmm. price point, you get a quality bicycle. So I have I have the whole range. I'm going to have used bicycles that oh, I fix okay. up. Great. So we'll have some used bicycles for so people can afford them. Uh, I'd like to sell those just to get people out on the trail. And then I will have everything up to a titanium bicycle from Italy that's welded in Colombia, that's decorated specifically for you at a $6,700 price point. So I'm going to cover the whole range of custom bikes because let the consumer decide let the and consumer decide sure. and then people will tell me what they want yeah so you know? one of the things i think about when i'm investing in a bicycle because i use mine to commute to work I, I think i said it earlier it's about an eight mile one way from mm -hmm. my home in sinking spring to when i worked in inner city Reading before i retired that was my glory time in the morning you know on a beautiful yes. morning riding my bike through my missing park on the trails the deer birds the sounds the aromas and then after a stressful day at work, which they often were, <laughs> in the media industry, riding home, I felt like I was getting on my horse and I was on my way home, you know, and I was, it was freedom. But I looked ahead and I wanted to invest in a bike that would be around for 10 years or so. And rather than investing in a cheap bike and then having to keep completely always change the components around, that's one of the mindsets I think you have to get into as a consumer, if you want to commute. And... The other point I want to make about commuting here between the trails and so forth, this is a unique community in, in the work that you've done and others have done. We have um, four universities, yes. campuses right. in our county, and they're all connected pretty much by trails. Yep. You can use the trail mm -hmm. system. So if you wanted to, you wouldn't have to have a car. You could commute to and from mm -hmm. school, yes. you know, roads, trails. It's, it's yeah. very, very good. Good point. But so yeah, if somebody, get comes, something good. If somebody comes in, I can also work with any of the manufacturers or brands and try to find something for a person too that fits their budget. I think the first thing I'd always ask somebody walking in is, what is your budget? Mm -hmm. and let me see what we can do. Because to me, it's more important to get somebody on a bicycle fulfilling a need that they have than, than selling them the most expensive thing that they maybe don't need. Sure. You know, yeah, so, so I'm, I'm curious, where do you see yourself and this store in five to 10 years? Oh, yeah. I would love in five years, I would love to be in West Reading in a bigger space mm -hmm. as a headquarters store. And then also to have a franchise of different locations. I would like to have a location in Wyoming. Okay. Colorado. Uh, what, like Jackson Hole or something you know, like that? Probably go closer up to. Uh, Actually, Sheridan, Wyoming, okay. which is near uh, uh, Cheyenne. Cheyenne, Cheyenne area, mm -hmm. uh, and then head into maybe Montana, 
and then down through Colorado because wow. the Rocky Mountains are a beautiful place. And then from here, if I was to do stores, I would literally just run them down the Schuylkill River Trail. Trail. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sure. So Pottstown, Phoenixville, and things like that. So maybe we can connect with the passenger rail connection. There you go. All of that. All of Pottstown, that. Phoenixville, uh, and Redding. We're all partnered, three counties. You go to I'm bringing that back. Your line, Bob, you take your bike on the train to the next town. You ride your bike. They have cars that yep. have, yeah. you know, places where you can bike. fix in your bike. All right. Senator Schwenk has to go to an, another. Yes. Another grand opening. You know. Oh, wow. Thank you. Uh, well, thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much. I, you know, I'm so glad I got to be able to see this and then be able to tell people what's available here in our community. Thank you, thank you so much thank you. for yeah. coming here. For thank you very it. much. Appreciate really you. appreciate it. As always. Aaron, best of luck. And Judy, as always. You best, yeah. Kristen.